Hello. 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 Don't know who you are. Oh, bless you, bless you. This is Cash in the Attic. But are you ready for us to rummage through? Yes, come on, come on. <laughs> the show that helps people find the hidden treasure in their home. And look at this. Wow. My mum would love it. Ooh, cash. To find the valuables in the clutter. Our expert appraisers leave no corner unexplored in their search for auction room gems. Oh, there's plenty of stuff in here to look at. To the proper rummage. <laughs> Some finds are a total surprise. Oh my goodness. Wow. So much. It's rather exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Some are unwanted. Yeah, they're quite freaky, aren't they? Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> and others are hard to part with. Is it something that you'd think about selling? I don't think I would. <laughs> Our appraisers' expert valuations will help people decide to sell or not to sell. <laughs> we would put an estimate of three to five hundred. Mm. I think you should, Mum. I think it's worth nearly a thousand pounds. Really? Yeah. Eileen? It's definitely going. We don't want any of it back. Then it's off to the auction to see if they can raise the money to make a dream come true. Main piece, 50s bid. Oh. Hold on, 110. Oh, oh, you bid it, you bid it. 600, nothing like a bit of tension. Oh, I've got gears bumps. On the phone. 32 now online and we've done. Astonishing. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> astonishing. Sold. <laughs> oh, Cassandra, are you OK? <laughs> yeah. We're on our way to meet today's treasure hunters, Pauline, John and their daughter Katie from Basingstoke. Now retired, they've been married for 51 years, which has given them plenty of time to amass quite a collection. Neither of us tend to throw things away. I think if we went up in the loft, we would find old school books, class notes and things like that old school magazines that we've got. We just haven't got the willpower to throw anything away. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've still got my first wage slip somewhere. We've got guarantees for things that we threw out 20 years ago and receipts for things that we don't have anymore. They're just... And instructions. Now, over many years of married life, no surprise, John and Pauline have collected numerous items. John, in particular, I think, is a real collector. Some would say hoarder. Where's the difference? Well, it all depends on what he's collected. Comics, records, an old car. <laughs> you can't hoard one thing. <laughs> he hoards, doesn't he? <laughs> you both collect in your own ways. Yes, but he hoards. As well as acquiring things, sometimes they find it hard to let them go. It does get a bit boring. Hearing the same thing over and over again, I must get rid of these, I must get rid of these. So now we've got the opportunity and he's going to get rid of them. So I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> Daughter Katie thinks it's high time for a clear out. I'm really proud that they're about to declutter their home and really go for it. It's something that they've spoken about quite a few times and I'm, I'm glad that they are just, you know, <laughs> going to go for it this time even though you'll be sad to see some of the stuff go. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, all of that suggests that we are probably going to have our hands full today. If anyone's going to find the treasure buried in this home, it's appraiser Jessica Forrester. I suppose, really, you're always hoping you're going to find amazing things, but often it's the, it's the lower monetary value that are the most interesting because every single thing has a story. Jessica and Jules will need to keep their eyes open today. John and Pauline have got big spending plans. I want the money to uh, have a new kitchen. Um, we need some more space. It's a come at a good time, um, and it's just a bonus that it, it can go towards the new kitchen, because I know Mum's wanted a new kitchen for such a long time. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just nice to to have a little declutter. With all the ground to cover, we'll need to put our best foot forward to keep this rummage on track. 
Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm well, and I am ready to rummage. Are you? Always. Can't wait. Well, I think John and Pauline have been here a very long time. The house, I think, is chock-a-block, not least the attic, which I'm assured is packed to the rafters with gear. Fabulous. Well, they want a few quid and they want to get rid, so come on, let's go. This is nice, isn't it? A little bit sort of old school. And it works. Always helpful. <laughs> Hey, Pauline. Oh, how are you? Hello, John. Is Katie there? Nice to Hi, meet Katie. You. Uh, I'm Jules. This is Jessica. Hello. Uh, nice to see you. We are very happy to see you too, and um, happy to help you have a bit of a sort out, which I gather needs to happen. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> well then, should we have a rummage? Yes, Let's do it. Please do. Go on then. After you. Thank you. While appraiser Jessica heads out to start the hunt, what's the target number for the rummage today? Well, Katie, John, Pauline, thanks for having us round at your place. And I'm delighted that you've given us a call to try and help you um, rationalise the stuff <laughs> that you've got in your home. I mean, how big an issue is it, really, do you think? Quite big. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of stuff that we have acquired over a long period of time and it is just accumulating. Uh, we can't f fight our way through the loft, actually. <laughs> well, that's our task today, isn't it? Now, as you all know, kitchens are famously uh, expensive. How much do you think you've got to sell? What do you think you might raise? At least 2000 Katie's looking bemused. Do you think that's remotely possible, £2,000? Because you know all this stuff. I, I would think so, yeah. They've got some good stuff. She's only just started searching, and Jessica's already found something in the study that's caught her eye. So, where did you come by this telephone? Uh, another antique shop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on our travels, we wanted a telephone that could be used. So, have you had it working here? It can work, yes. So, we are yeah. a functioning, functioning telephone. telephone. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, General Electric Company, a uh, British company founded in 1886, so this is probably around about 1910, 1920. It's got that feel to it. You've got the maid dashing in to answer the phone for the, the lady of the residence and all of that. It's a really smart example. It's got a really good weight to it, being brass. Obviously, it works. Yes. You just don't want to use it anymore. Nope. I think, realistically, if it went to auction, you'd be looking 50 to 100 pounds. Mm. Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go. So you'd be happy to see it go to auction? I would. No. Fabulous. Yeah. Brilliant. With up to £100 banked towards their £2,000 target, John and Pauline's treasure hunt is off to a solid start. It's a sort of Egyptian Statue of Liberty, isn't it? I like that. We just need to make sure this rummage keeps its eye on the target. This is Cash in the Attic, the show that helps people find the hidden treasure in their home to sell at auction and make a dream come true. Should we have a rummage? Let's yes. do it. Please do. Come on then. We're in Basingstoke with appraiser Jessica Forrester, treasure hunting with John and Pauline and their daughter Katie. He hoards, doesn't he? <laughs> what? I don't like to see them. You both collect in your own ways. Yes, but he hoards. <laughs> I find it difficult to part with things. He hoards. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> They're looking to raise £2,000 to put towards a new kitchen. I think, realistically, if it went to auction, you'd be looking 50 to £100. Really? With an estimated £100 already, this rummage is off to a good start, but there's still a lot of treasure hunting to be done. John, what are you doing with a street plan of of Worcester and Droitwich Spa. Uh... <laughs> In the living room, Jessica's picked out something on the mantelpiece. 
Well, this is a happy little scene. What have we got here, then? So here we've got a Royal Limoges vase and cover. It was about £40 when we bought it. Is it an antique of value? It, it's lovely. It's Limoges. It's marked underneath here. You can see Royal Limoges under there. Uh, it's very stereotypical of their style, with the cobalt blue highlighted in the gilt here. You've got the lovely maidens in the cartouche on this side. Um, you can see it's got these little turquoise applique where they've just doubled on a bit of extra enamel. It's probably 1920s-ish, I would say. It's hankering after something a bit older yeah. with this style. I mean, it's very not of the Art Deco period in its look. And I would just point out that its beautiful little lid here has seen better days. Yeah. It's been glued. It's probably been <laughs> re re repaired Without the damage, you might be looking sort of 80 to 120 pounds. Okay. With the damage, I think you'd probably be looking more 40 to 60 because it is being sold purely for its decorative qualities. Happy to let it go still? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Katie, yeah. what do you think? It would be a shame because it's, I've always known it to be there. <laughs> it was, something will be missing. <laughs> That's interesting. That wasn't the response no, I was no. expecting. Were you, no. Jessica? No. Not at all. I thought you'd be like, oh, great, get no, rid of just, it. It was part of the furniture. It would be a shame. But You could say yeah. that about everything here, actually. Well, yeah. You've got to think of the new kitchen. Exactly. John's personal treasure trove is up in the loft. I think John is up here. He's unpacked his boyhood collection of comics for Jessica's opinion, and there's quite a lot of them. Hello, John. <laughs> wow. John, when you said you had a lot of comics, mm -hmm. I wasn't quite expecting 1,500. <laughs> it's taken a little while. When did you first start collecting? I first bought them when I was still at school, uh, right when all the very early Spider-Mans and Hulks were coming out. I used to walk all the newsagent shops and uh, second-hand shops in Southampton every weekend and just buy them up. And, and you've curated them into these plastic uh, wallets, which have clearly helped look after them. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a proper curatorial job, this, isn't it? I mean, I've got a whole load of daredevils here. You've got some... I've got Fantastic Fours. So I've got Spider-Man here, Captain America. And what was it about the comic world and the characters? Apart from, you know, the, the science fiction element and the stories, I just love the artwork. I love the colours. Yeah. You get to know the styles of some of the artists there. Jack Kirby, uh, Stan Lee. There's always been a collector's market for comics, but I think the release and the sequels of all of the Marvel films, the Marvel Universe and everything that has been happening in recent times has just brought that collection again to the forefront. There is more of a demand for it yet again now than there previously was. You know, at auction, you, there is the beauty that you've got two people that want a comic that, for all intents and purposes, might be worth £200, but because two people just want that one comic, it could sell for thousands. Sure. And I don't expect to get the full catalogue value, you know, even if it's 30% of that figure. Yeah. It's still substantial. Wow. So we are potentially into thousands, even conservatively, but getting these to the right place in front of the right audience is what's going to, to make the difference. Oh, enormously. I think, to be brutally honest, with the sheer volume of comics we've got here today, you know, we haven't got time to go through them all. I think it would be an injustice to the collection. I think the best thing that we can do is get a specialist in. They've got the actual time to go through individually. I've enjoyed collecting. I still enjoy the artwork. Yeah. But I, they're just taking up too much room. I think this is a really rare find, isn't it, to find such a beautiful and wide-ranging collection that's been put together with so much care and attention. It wasn't a shrewd move on my part. I bought them because I liked them. <laughs> that's so the best way. The rest of the world caught up a couple of decades later. <laughs> but that's often the case, isn't it? Right time, right place. But, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure to see them. It really has. halfway through this rummage and while Jessica's evaluation so far of over £150 isn't huge, her suggestion to get a specialist to look at John's comics could make a big difference. Back in the living room, Pauline's got some antique market finds she wants Jessica to take a look at. So these two lovely ladies, do you know anything about them? Nothing at all. OK, so these are 19th century bronze figures. You can see they've got little plaques on the bottom. This mm -hmm. one's gaiety and this one is modesty. And they're on oh, these turned ebonised plinth bases. 
That one obviously has had a lot more attention than this yep. one in that you can see that the colour's changed mm -hmm. on it. I think they're really decorative items, um, obviously with the French labels on them there. I think mm -hmm. there's a real market for these sort of figurines. They're oh. easily accommodated. You know, they're very, very pretty featured. And I think at auction, I would expect them to go somewhere between 80 and 120 pounds. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice. <laughs> Goodbye. It's been nice knowing you. Time's nearly up on this rummage, but there's one last item we need to take a look at that's even bigger than John's comic collection. Wow, so this is it then? This is the famous Vauxhall Viva. Can, can we take this off? We can give it a go. Or, or is this holding it together? Probably. <laughs> it might get caught up. And be careful, because the headlamp's broken. There wow, John. There it is. An icon of the 1970s. <laughs> Isn't that astonishing? You've nice. had this in the family then from, from day one? Uh, yeah, Pauline's dad had it from new in 1969. He sold it to me, to us, in 1974. Yeah. I loved it and nurtured it till 1990, and then we replaced it, but I didn't have the heart to get rid of it. So it's just been festering here on the drive since 1990. Were you born when this was parked? Yep, <laughs> just about. Do you know how many miles it's done? I think about 160. Wow. Oh. Door opens. So it's run in then? <laughs> just. 158,000. Wow. Plenty of life left in it yet. Project. It's been the, uh, the butt of many stories, both by friends at work and people around all know the story of the Vauxhall Viva and when I'm going to renovate it. I think the, the, the new price was maybe six or seven hundred pounds in. Now Jessica you are brilliant at valuing things. Thank you. you are always spot on but I feel a little unkind asking you to put a value on this because it's how long is a piece of string isn't it because the amount of work and effort that's going to have to go into this and finding the right enthusiast who's passionate about bringing it back to life. Can you begin to put a number on it? I mean, if I had to guesstimate, surely it must be five to seven hundred pounds. That's astonishing. <laughs> Is that higher than you thought? Absolutely. Maybe I should have got a hundred to two. <laughs> I thought I'd have to pay somebody to take it away. Well, let's face it, if you got a hundred quid for it and, it and it disappeared and the problem was removed... Well, one person would be happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the car valued at around £600, they're making good progress to their target. And if John's comic collection delivers, they could beat it. Let's hope so. Because there's a new kitchen at stake. Everybody has something to do with Cliff Richard. This is Cash in the Attic, the show where we help people find the hidden treasure in their home. For all intents and purposes, it might be worth £200, but because two people just want that one comic, it could sell for thousands. Sure. Jules and expert appraiser Jessica have been hunting for things to sell at auction with John and Pauline in Basingstoke, with help from their daughter Katie. Be a shame because it's I've always known it to be there. <laughs> Something will be missing. That's interesting. That wasn't the response I was expecting. <laughs> this collecting couple are hoping to raise two thousand pounds towards a new kitchen. There wow, John, there it is. An icon of the 1970s. <laughs> Isn't that astonishing? But are we on the right track? Jessica, your favourite item? I think for me it's got to be the telephone. And uh, Pauline, any surprises in terms of the valuations? I think the telephone, I really didn't expect it to be valued at that high. And some fascinating items here. However, the comics are the big unknown, aren't they? They are. I mean, I think the reality is with the sheer volume that are here, we need to have the time to go through them properly, pick out the ones that need to be sold separately, put the small runs in lots together just to give them the best opportunity. But we're thinking thousands? We are certainly thinking multiple thousands, yes. And although we can't put a round figure on what you might achieve 
you are going to get a very, very nice kitchen. One that you can, all three of you, join in planning uh, together and choosing. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I work in the kitchen. If there is anything else that you come across that you think is worth sending to the auction, chuck it in the truck. Okay. All right? Yeah. And get rid. Yeah. Get it sold and get it going into your new kitchen. Well, we'll do. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. A right result. It looks like John and Pauline could smash their £2,000 target. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, guys, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and uh, we'll keep everything crossed and we'll see you in a few weeks' time. Excellent. Thank you. Can't thank wait. You. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. Bye. This has been an eye-opener as to, you know, having someone help us yeah. get Yeah, get we really the appreciate things. the professional advice. That's something that we don't know how to deal with, so we're really grateful for that. Well, what an interesting day it has been. £2,000 John and Pauline wanted, £2,000 they are almost certainly going to get. But goodness me, when we put those comics into the mix, clearly this story is far from over. Can't wait for the auction. Three weeks later, Jessica's arranged for two comics experts to assess John's collection. Terry Palmer and Jonathan Tarod work at Excalibur, an auction house that specialises in comics and toys. The key thing for us is um, looking for what we would call key issues. Mm -hmm. And that can be the um, first appearance of a character. Um, and those are influenced by, um, as we said, the, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is a really nice collection, I think. Um, it's interesting because they're mostly Marvel. It's good because it is driven by what's, what's coming up on TV. You see on the internet people are... Every episode of, of the latest one, Moon Knight, people are pouring over the episode. They're pulling up which comics does this particular episode relate right. to. So it's caused the whole Marvel back catalogue to, right. to go up. These groundbreaking Marvel comics with their visually striking 60s and 70s cover art will be broken into separate lots. If this collection were to come through uh, a specialist auction like ourselves, in terms of being very conservative about the value, I think we could put uh, an auction estimate of eight to ten thousand pounds on the collection. Um, and on a good day, I would hope we'll get somewhere possibly towards 15,000 for the collection. Good grief. Um, one of the interesting pieces, though, is that this particular pile that we have separated out here is probably worth about half the value of the whole collection. Yeah, amazing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> John and Pauline's Hall will be auctioned at the Swan Auction House in Oxfordshire. The sale will be run by co-owner and head auctioneer, Tom Keane. Having worked in the industry for over three decades, the things that excite me now are the things I haven't seen before. 75 or 80, 80, 80, 80 about 85. Yes, 85, 90 or 85. Every day to day at school, I never really know what's going to happen. At 3002, 3004. Tom will be drumming up interest from potential buyers in the hope that they bid big. 85, your bid, sir. 85, sir. 85 pounds sold. Meanwhile, in Basingstoke, John and Pauline are packing all the items going to auction. We've got that that's going. I anticipate what it's going to be like on auction day, actually. Today, this is. Uh, this is making it all happen but uh, can't wait for the auction day it's sad in a way things like this um, belong to John's mum and dad as well as the items that Jessica found in the rummage they decided to add some extra lots to the auction there goes the room. there's one lot in particular that's going to need more than some bubble wrap to safely get it to auction Wow, they're here to pick up the Viva. What a mess. It's okay, it's I hope somebody's up. ready for this. Oh, I, I, oh, I see movement. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, someone will look after you <laughs> instead of leaving you to rot. <laughs> Ooh. That's one auction lot Pauline will be glad to see the back of. Here's hoping the comics collection will boost the renovation pot too. Feels like I'm selling my soul. <laughs> Very emotional. Six weeks later, and all of John and Pauline's items have been photographed, catalogued and displayed to catch the eye of potential buyers. The day of the auction has finally arrived. Well, at last, it's auction day for John and for Pauline. They must be chuffed to bits that that's no longer in the drive. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, kind of looks better there, doesn't it, strangely? I don't know Try how. Try to place that. <laughs> but this is interesting, isn't it? Because we've got two auctions for them. We've got the bulk of their stuff, which is going under the hammer here at the Swan. But then we're going to a secondary auction in a couple of weeks' time where we're going to sell their comics. Fingers crossed for those. Are you optimistic that they could make big money? Yeah, I think being in a specialist auction, they just stand a much better chance for appealing to more of the collector's market. Well, we've tailored the approach just for them. However, they're not here yet. We've got time to go and have a snoop around, see what else is for sale. That's it. Let's go. So immediately here, I'm drawn to the Cartier label on this perfume bottle. It's just iconic. It's, it's a great name. You can see it there. It's really stylish in its own right. There's always been a sort of collector's market here for scent bottles. I love collecting Militaria. Pack radio, some other radio sets here. Clearly, once in the possession of somebody who loved collecting this, and it's being moved on. All we need now is the arrival of our sellers. Well, John, Pauline, how are you? Uh, oh, nice to see you. you again. And you. So where's Katie? Oh, sadly, she's had to work today, so she couldn't make it. So she's missing out on the experience of an auction, The Jessica. best part. The best part of it. Are you two experienced auction goers? Me, not at all. I've been to one. Well, John, <laughs> it all awaits you. Well, and you too, Pauline. Well, we can tell it's your auction because, look, the Viva's made it. Yeah. All pride, the way from your drive. Pride of place here. Uh, to here. Well, of course, we never know what's going to happen until we get on the floor of the auction room. So, shall we? OK, okay let's, let's get it done. Thank you. It's nice that you um, left all the spares in it. <laughs> That's for restoration. A project. A project, yeah. The auction's about to start, and as well as the bidders in the sale room, there are potential buyers around the world, online and on the phone. Staff at the Swan will be handling the remote bids. Point to about the start of the sale. Right then, OK, here we go. The first item to go under the hammer is the antique phone that Jessica valued at 50 to £100. Well, we've got between 70 and 100 that would be good. Wouldn't it be nice? Short and swing, well, at £70 and £70, something all done. On there you go. Pounds. 70. There you are. Brilliant. It's a good start. And next up, it's the metal figurines that were estimated at £80 to £120. Now then, Pauline, these cast iron statues, I mean, probably not a fair description, is it? Because they are rather kind of elegant. Um, were these one of your favourite things? I think they're really good looking things. They've got that bronzed antique look about them, so they're really striking. You've got an estimate here, Jessica, 80 to 120. Fingers crossed on that? Fingers crossed. Right, let's have a look. Bid is up to 70 pounds. You want 70 pounds? Will you take the seller for 70? 70 pounds, yeah. 70 pounds. Happy? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Exactly. 70 pounds, you're welcome again. 70 pounds and gone. 70 pounds. Slightly under valuation, but it's another sale. And next, the items that John and Pauline added after our rummage day. Well, number 5A now, and Berlin. About £20 again. There we go. Upper end in the estimate. That's all right. If they all go for the upper end, we'll be yeah. OK. Yeah. An early 20th century cast iron and brass rectangular uh, safe door, just the door. £20, the safe door. £20. There you go. Set of five late 19th century German blue and white porcelain coffee cans and saucers. £12 on a 12. Oh, great. £12. Brilliant. A little collection here of Royal Winton. I've not heard of Royal Winton before. Is it something you saw? I made toilets. It is, yes. Yeah, quite right. Royal Winton. A parcel of Art Deco chintz pottery items, number 58 now, £41. Going off to China with these. And the bids just keep on coming. <laughs> now then, the hand-painted uh, James Hadley Worcester uh, teacup and saucer. £38 and going all done, £38. Brilliant. 20th century blue and white dolls tea set. About £10 and we got £10 and make them a bit of gone. 
Thanks, Tom. It's Leonard Campbell Prince. We've got the pair here. Well, let's see how they do. Oh, right. They're going to start at 18 pounds. Happy? No further interest. Got 19. Thanks, Tom. There we go. Now, this sewing machine. The estimate is 10 quid. For the Stinger sewing machine. Go on. 10 pounds. I know someone's buying it for his girlfriend. Nice one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I tell them about 10, about 10 pounds, sold at 10 pounds, about 10 pounds and gone. Seems to be single. <laughs> Fabulous. There you are. Next, the vase with the cracked lid that Jessica valued at 40 to 60 pounds. To sort of, Tom just trying to get on and it comes in and go. Do you want to sell it or not? No, no. We haven't got a bit of 50 pounds. We haven't got a bit of 30 pounds yet. We'll see what happens. 30 pounds for it. Get it started. Right, that's it, you can't have it. There you go. <laughs> it's coming back. Good. Um, you can continue to look up at it on the mantelpiece. Well, Katie them. didn't really seem to want it to go, did she? Actually, that's very on true. The, on the day when we yeah. spoke about yeah. it, yeah, she, she, she said, oh, it. she was in two minds, so maybe that's her birthday present right there. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so we've saved you 70 quid there. Yeah. Last, it's the Vauxhall Viva that's been sitting on their drive for 30 years. Will it be going to a new home? Lot number 15A now, the 1969 Vauxhall Viva no, you HBS8. Can't. Obviously an MOT failure. <laughs> <laughs> you can take a chance this one, aren't you? 650 bid, you want 700? 700 bid, 750. 750? 750 bid, 800. 800 bid, 850. I mean... <laughs> Thank you for trying. At 800 pounds, a bid eight, on... Eight, 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 800 pounds. Wow! 800 pounds, 800 pounds, going all done for 800 pounds and sold then. Finished. God! <laughs> that must be one of the most unusual things ever to be sold here in, in, in recent months, did I would thought. I'll tell you how rare these were. There's only 50 of those left in the country. Well, somebody's got one of them for £800, which is going into your pockets. Wow. Oh, yeah, you did not Thank you very much. I look forward to it. The idea it is. <laughs> You're an expert. £800. Astonishing. Yep. Okay. Go on, then. Yeah. After you. Okay. Thank you. I'm still on a high. It's been a, just an experience all day and a fabulous experience. Thankfully, all the big heavy things went, <laughs> including the sewing machine and the Viva, so they won't have to come home again. So, Jessica, were you happy with the way that all went? Yes, definitely. How could you not be? I think it was really good. Everything seemed to land on the money, but I guess the big takeaway surprise <laughs> was this, the Viva, 800 quid. Yes, definitely. I mean, I was thrilled that my sort of guesstimate, one might say conservatively, actually got there. Well, <laughs> as it would, as it would. No, I'm delighted. They've got 1,100 quid already, but of course, the comic auction is yet to come. Let's hope it's not a laughing matter. <laughs> come on, let's go. I think you're meant to be buying me dinner. This is Cash in the Attic, the show where we help people find the hidden treasure in their home to make a dream come true. Short and swing, got a £70 and £70 selling all done. There you go. There you are. Brilliant. John and Pauline have already sold over a £1,000 worth at auction. <laughs> God! Oh! <laughs> that must be one of the most unusual things ever to be sold here in, in, in recent months. But today, they're coming to a specialist auction house who will be selling John's childhood collection of valuable comics. Auctioneer Jonathan Tarode has inspected the 1,500 individual comics and come up with a plan to help boost sales. Um, I think uh, the Tomb of Dracula number 10 uh, should do very well. That's uh, a big comic with uh, First Appearance of Blade and also the uh, Spider-Man number 50 should also do very well. Uh, we've had a lot of interest prior to the sale, so um, we're looking forward to a really good, really good uh, sale. I think uh, hopefully today we should do around about £8,000 for the collection. Just depends on who's out there on the day. As well as people in the sale room, there are bidders online from all over the world, and John's comics have attracted a lot of attention. I've already had people bidding, uh, registering to bid from uh, the US and from Canada and uh, all over Europe as well as uh, the UK. What we need now is our comic collecting couple. 
Well, guys, it's lovely to see you again. Another day, another auction. And who have you brought along with you this time? Uh, this is my son. He's a collector also, and he was particularly interested to come along. And it's Ben, isn't it? Ben, yeah, my ben, name's Ben. Sorry. Ben, it's lovely to see you. Uh, Katie did a great job during the rummage. We've already been through one auction. We've got just over a £1,000 for you, but today's the day, isn't it? How optimistic are we that we could get into the thousands? Very optimistic. I think we've come to a specialist auction house, so I think we've put the comics in the best possible place that we can. We're already ahead of the game. As I say, we've got just over a £1,000 for you already. Let's see how our comic auction plays out. Come on, after mm -hmm. you. John's collection has been broken into 200 separate lots. To kick off, some bundles of Marvel comics with fantastically dynamic covers. 482 is the mixed British Marvel lot. He's selling at 25. 11.69. Yes, a lovely lot here, the uh, Mighty World of Marvel. The gavel is up at £80. Last call at £80 is selling. The job lots are flying out the door. Next, 54 UK comics with a characteristically British artwork style. 406 is the British Comics and Magazine lot. Fantastic uh, bits and pieces there. At 250, 280, 300. At £300, 320, oh, 350, the <laughs> at £350, 380, 400, 420, selling away at 420, 420, wow. thank you, 5058. Wow. Fantastic. £420 for just one lot has really got this auction powering ahead, and there are dozens more lots to come. Conan the Barbarian at 140, 150. I'm out on the internet now at 150 pounds. Oh, we all done at 150. Fair warning. I mean, this is this is getting quite lights, interesting now, isn't it? Uh, Conan, uh, Are you surprised? It is his inheritance. <laughs> Selling at 75. 75. It's all adding up. It's going to be all right. 491. Hull the Conqueror. Room Builder has it at 28 pounds. Last call. Thank you. Next up, the very first edition of Ghost Rider, illustrated by artwork legends Jill Kane and Joe Sinnott. This was the first solo title for Ghost Rider. Seems cheap to me, but £200. We will sell it. £200. Last call at £200. £200. Oh, one it's all going towards the worktop, <laughs> isn't it? They've raised over £3,000 already, and there's high hopes for his valuable 1967 Tomb of Dracula. Tomb of Dracula, number 10, uh, first oh, yeah. appearance of Blade, yeah. Vampire Slayer, 500 pounds. Wow. 550, back in the room, 550. At 550, I, what, I wish I had bought a few cards. <laughs> back in the day. 550, six is next. Fair warning and selling at 550. Wow, how does that feel? That feels <laughs> amazing. Brilliant. And the pot keeps on building. 1960s Stan Lee's mystical creation, Doctor Strange, goes for £55. Here's the Doctor Strange lot. Uh, 18 of them in the lot there. £50 a bit. Any advance on You do love 50. Doctor Strange. Yes. Uh, £50, 55 in the Czech Republic. Uh, £55. And selling at £55. Last call at 55 There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Popular franchise, the X-Men fetches 95. X-Men now, um, should, should and uh, well. we have uh, 14 in the lot at 1995. At 95 pounds, are we all done? At 95 pounds, fair warning and selling at 95 pounds. Last call. 95. Bit better. I'd say that's all right, John. And all the rest of the lots continue to sell. 40. 40813 selling. Last call. 60. The penultimate lot is a single comic. Can the association with the movies help Spider Man go big? Brilliant. Um, Brilliant, yeah. Six, 60, a very strong finish so far. Two to go. 18 pounds. 18 pounds the net 2022. At 22 pounds. Anybody else coming in? 22 pounds only. Oh, oh, 25, I saw it. 25, it's <laughs> still going. 30 pounds on the net. Last call at 30, we're selling it. Not the biggest sale they've had, but can the last two important editions of Spider-Man deliver for them? 
Right. right. Our so, final lot is about to happen. Is that the end of an era? <laughs> These are Amazing fairly iconic. Look, only 190, 200. Yeah. And I go straight in on this one at 340. Thank wow. you. Wow. Thank you. Big you finish. finish. 350, 350 in the room. 380, <laughs> 400. Oh, seriously, I'm 400. 400 on yeah. the net at 400 pounds. Phone? You're on the phone. The phone's on the game. The internet's buzzing at 550. Right. 550. 550 on the internet. 500, 550 at 550. And we're selling at 550. There we go. Wow. Wow. The current interest in Marvel has really driven up the bids. Well, that was an amazing romp through 200 lots. Your 1,500 comics have all sold. Yes. Nothing's coming home with you but some cash. Should we go and find out how much? Definitely. Let's do Come on. Well, that was a marathon, wasn't it? It was indeed. How's everybody's backside? <laughs> Numb. Numb? Yeah, nice yeah, to stand yeah. up, isn't it? The good news, Jessica, none of them failed to sell. No, indeed. So none of them are coming home. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Hurrah. And I think, you know, as we observe sort of part way through, you seem to be pretty satisfied with the numbers. You know, some were higher, some, some were lower. Some, but some were down, yeah. But some real surprises and the flourish at the end. Yeah. Big finish. Big finish. Yeah. It's clear John and Pauline have smashed their £2,000 target. But how much have they raised in total? What have we done today, Jessica? So today, total hammer price for all of the comics, 10,626. <laughs> uh, fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Well done. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> That is astonishing, isn't it? It's fabulous. So with your 1,100 added on top of that, you are well on your way to your new kitchen. <laughs> it's great. I didn't think it would be that much. No, I was not expecting it to be over 10. Watching our dad's childhood uh, get put through auction was uh, definitely uh, an experience. I could see it in his face. That was... Uh, yeah. 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 I guess that was my, uh, that was my teens and 20s I just sold off. When we first met John and Pauline at their home and we started rummaging for what they had, we could never have imagined that we'd end up conducting two auctions. No, quite. Combined, they are now walking away with just under £12,000. Over £10,500 of that, the comics, they do seem very happy. They do, and that's the main thing. <laughs> that is the main <laughs> thing. Can't wait to see what that kitchen's going to look like. Quite. And we got rid of the Vauxhall Viva. Hurrah. Result. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Two months later, and John and Pauline haven't made their mind up on the new kitchen, but they've used some of their auction proceeds to treat themselves to two weeks on the South Coast. Yeah.